With their iPACE, Jaguar became the first of the premium brand manufacturers to make a long-range, practical, battery-powered electric vehicle. If you can afford the asking price, you might well have everything you could want here. A claimed near 300 mile WLTP driving range, 400 PS, potentially zero emissions, and a car that might be as comfortable with high performance driving as it is on a muddy track. But would you want one? Perhaps a better question is why wouldn't you want one? Technology people can create an electric car, but only car people can make one like the iPACE. So much has been said and written about the iPACE. After all, this all-electric SUV isn't just a new Jaguar, but a new breed of Jaguar, a car the mark describes as its most important model since the E-Type of the 60s. The more important claim that we're here to address is that it's currently the best electric vehicle on the planet. As you can tell from that, Jaguar has held nothing back in creating this car, and we'll be doing the same in putting it to the test. The idea of an all-electric Jaguar might be strange, but even stranger is the fact that this British brand was quicker than all its wealthier established German rivals in bringing a car like this to market. The iPACE launched in the spring of 2018, and perhaps we shouldn't be surprised. The Coventry car maker may have a traditionalist reputation, but history records that it's never been afraid to innovate when really necessary, just as it did in an unprecedented post-war period that saw it produce the XK120 sports car, then a string of standard-setting luxury saloons that led to the landmark XJ6 model of 1968. We have, once again, reached such a crucial transitional time in the history of the motor car. A decade ago, we were told to expect an electric vehicle revolution, which is still yet to happen, mainly because of the lack of a charging infrastructure, but also because EV development has been so lacking in industry leadership that it's been left to relative minnows like Tesla to try and plot a way forward. The American company proved that the luxury market had an appetite for battery-powered cars, but for many, the models it made felt like very sophisticated automotive appliances. For those of us who still believe in the magic of the motor car with all it stands for, there was room for more. Can Jaguar provide it? Now, billions have been poured into this first British designed mass produced electric model to try and ensure that. But more importantly, Jaguar's brought to this class of car all the things that Tesla doesn't have. Brand heritage, a history of exemplary drive dynamics, and an understanding of the type of interior environment that older, wealthier customers look for. Mind you, close rivals like the Audi e-tron and the Mercedes EQC now offer this too. To beat them, take on the many other rivals that will follow and continue to trump Tesla, this iPACE will need to be very good indeed. Is it? Let's find out. It's always interesting to see how a manufacturer with no prior experience in full electric vehicles approaches the task of designing one in a way that will make it feel familiar to someone fresh to the EV segment. So what's this one like? Well, the fact that unlike Tesla, Jaguar provides you with a handbrake switch and a start button immediately makes the iPACE feel more car-like, as does the fact that the car creeps forward of its own volition when you press D, though you can turn this feature off. Selecting drive also sees the digital instrument cluster illuminate, along with capacitive controls on the relatively small diameter steering wheel. All of this delivered to the exterior accompaniment of the kind of low hum you might get from an overhead power line. You're ready. All electric vehicles spear away from rest like a scolded cat, and this one's no different, though its throttle response has been set to be a little more linear and less switch-like than the EV norm. As a result, unless you're particularly ham-fisted with the throttle, in which case 60 miles an hour is dispatched with almost alarming speed in just 4.8 seconds on the way to 124 miles an hour, forward motion feels effortless and very Jaguar-like. 
Adding to the drama is a futuristic jet engine style wine, the pitch of which varies with your choice of drive mode and increases with speed. You can turn this down, in which case it uses anti-noise sounds through the speakers to try and cancel out wind and tyre roar, but we quite like the soundtrack's rather Flash Gordon style feel. A 90 kilowatt hour lithium iron battery containing 432 pouch cells sits between front and rear wheels, powering two synchronous permanent magnet electric motors, one at each axle, so as to provide permanent four-wheel drive. There's a single 400 PS power output specification and the transmission is a single speed epicyclic unit. None of this is revolutionary in terms of EV design, but we're promised that the way this iPACE handles will be. That's thanks to perfect 50-50 weight distribution, a low centre of gravity, and the kind of overriding emphasis on driver feedback that tends to be missing from Tesla's technology. You feel this immediately through the quick and accurate steering, which has real substance to it, particularly if you switch the Jaguar Drive driving mode system from comfort to dynamic. That gives you the confidence to press on a bit through sharper turns, at which point you begin to appreciate the impressive levels of body control that have been engineered into this chassis. Tipping the scales at over 2.2 tonnes, this Jaguar is a heavy car but doesn't feel it, primarily because such a large proportion of its weight is situated low down. There's also a very good torque vectoring system which works as an integral part of the powertrain to transfer exactly the right amount of torque to the tyre that needs it most. All of which means that there's plenty of grip when you turn into a bend at speed and huge traction to make the most of the 696 newton meters of torque that the electric motors offer to hurl you out the other side. Where you really do feel that weight though is when traveling over the kind of bumpier low speed surfaces that populate most people's morning commute. On its standard coil springs with the big 20 or 22 inch wheels that almost all owners will want, the iPACE rather struggles here. With the result that you'll feel speed humps and sharper tarmac tears more keenly than you would in an equivalent fossil fueled luxury saloon or SUV of this price. Realising the inevitability of this, rival Audi e-tron and Mercedes EQC electric models come with air suspension as standard. Jaguar chooses to make this feature optional, pairing it up with another option, an adaptive dynamics and configurable dynamics package that can alternatively be paired to the ordinary coil springs if you like the feel of that better. Realistically, you're going to require one, or ideally both, of these extra cost damping packages. We're trying air suspension here, a setup that offers three ride heights that vary over 90 millimeters. At over 65 miles an hour, it lowers the car by 10 millimeters for a more aerodynamic stance, or it can raise it at lower speeds for greater ground clearance. Ultimately, the air sprung package is one we think you'll need if you're to make this car everything it can be. In pursuit of that, you're also going to need to adopt a slightly different driving style, or at least you will if you're going to get anywhere near the quoted 292 mile travelling range that the WLTP cycle optimistically claims is possible between the lengthy overnight charges this iPACE will need to replenish its lithium ion cells. That figure assumes the permanent engagement of the provided eco driving mode, which restricts the energy drain of the air conditioner and things like the seat heating. And more proactively, it's based on maximum use of this Jaguar's brake regeneration system, which uses the front motor to reclaim energy when cruising or under braking. In the process, slowing the car so dramatically that in normal driving with regeneration in its highest setting, the brake pedal tends to be used only when you want to come to a complete stop. Keep that in maximum setting and Jaguar reckons you can dispense with up to 98% of actual brake use. It sounds weird, but will soon feel absolutely normal once you've acclimatised to the way the system works. 
Something else that might seem rather strange is the idea of taking an electric vehicle off-road to any serious degree. After all, rival luxury EVs make no secret of the fact that their permanent four-wheel drive systems are therefore slippery paved surfaces rather than the Serengeti. Thanks to borrowed Land Rover technology though, this Jaguar can do more. Its drive setup, which incorporates the Discovery's low traction launch system, allows it to send precisely the right amount of torque to precisely the right wheel at precisely the right time, which means that the Disco's useful all-surface progress control package, a kind of low-speed cruise control for when you're inching along off-road, works even better here. All you have to do is set a crawl speed between 2 and 18 miles an hour and the iPACE will find a way to try and reach it, scrabbling away while simultaneously adjusting the differentials and the brake-driven torque vectoring system. All you need to do is keep your feet off the pedals and leave the car to do its thing. And that's just the start. With air suspension fitted and positioned at maximum height, which will give this car ground clearance of 230 millimetres, this Jaguar will be able to ford water up to 500 millimetres deep. Plus, there's an optional ADSR, or Adaptive Surface Response System, which recognises differences between different kinds of terrain and adapts the iPACE's accelerator pedal response to allow for a more stable drive across different surfaces, such as grass, gravel or snow, all of which makes us suspect that if you were to fit this car out with a set of proper off-road tyres, you'd probably be astonished at how far it could take you into the wilderness. But of course the likelihood of that happening is about as high as the chances of you coming across the kind of 100 kilowatt public charger that Jaguar says would replenish this car's battery to 80% of capacity in less than the time it takes for you to do your shopping. There weren't any public chargers of that type available to this car in the UK at the time of this test. So let's get back to hard reality, which is most pertinently in this case, that Europe, and in particular the UK, has public charging structure woefully underprepared for the kind of technology that cars like this can now offer. So you're going to have to very carefully plan lengthier excursions. You're going to need an overnight charging regime and you're going to need mastery of this car's range extending technology. Things like the preconditioning feature that perfects a preset cabin temperature before you commence your journey. And even with all that in place, you'll still require a second fossil fueled luxury car for longer trips. If all of that can work for you, the iPACE will too. In fact, if you've been waiting for luxury EVs to get serious, we reckon your time may have come here. In the next decade, there will certainly be better battery-powered electric vehicles than this, but we don't believe there are right at present. And we think in future, experts will look back at this car as the one that made the EV concept probably credible for the premium buyer, which makes it very significant indeed. It isn't only the powertrain of this iPACE that changes everything you know about Jaguar. The Styling 2 is a radical departure from the brand's established values, as you'd expect it would be. After all, given that there's simply no need here to make space for a whole hunk of metal in the nose, there's also no need for the kind of long bonnet, short boot proportions that until now have characterised virtually every successful Jaguar model in history. It's also a shape that's dimensionally difficult to get your head round. You expect an SUV with this kind of luxury and this kind of price tag to be BMW X5 or Porsche KN sized. Well, this one isn't, yet kind of is. Its roadway footprint is actually 50 millimeters shorter than that of a Jaguar F-Pace in the next class down. Yet the I-Pace has a wheelbase 160 millimeters longer than its showroom stablemate, so as to free up the kind of interior space common from the next class up. Which leaves us with, well, what? A car that's nominally an SUV because that suits the mood of the moment and creates a high stance that leaves plenty of lower space for all those batteries. But also a model that depending on how you look at it could almost equally well be seen as a four-door coupe or even some kind of sports car. 
The signature Jaguar grille that's flanked by piercing LED headlamps here at the front is certainly supposed to suggest that, though its purpose is purely aesthetic. The three independent cooling systems for the electric motors, the battery and the interior have no need of this aperture, so it doesn't actually admit any air. The reverse angled rear section is design director Ian Callum's favourite aspect of this car and the part of it most directly responsible for the commendably low 0.29 CD drag factor from a body structure that's 94% fashioned from aluminium. It shrouds the kind of low wide skateboard style platform you'll find in every EV. This one not only supporting an enormous 90 kilowatt hour battery but also a couple of electric motors, one at each axle. Having two delivers nominal four-wheel drive in keeping with the SUV remit, but just as importantly allowed Jaguar's designers to put the wheels exactly where they wanted. Apparently, with only one motor and a single driven axle, the rear wheels would have had to have been further forward in the body to make the car drive normally. As it is, the huge alloy rims, 20 inches here, with up to 22 inches available, are pushed right out to the corners of the design to increase its wheelbase. Hence the way that a car significantly shorter than a rival Tesla Model X can offer a more spacious cabin. Not everything's perfect, of course. We're not really fans of the motorised door handles borrowed from the Range Rover Velar, which have a coffin handle-like look when extended. But the way the shoulder line flows up into these muscular rear haunches gives the car a pleasingly power-packed perspective, complemented by this neat branded lower trim strip. Beyond that, frippery has been kept to a minimum. There's certainly no pretense at SUV trinketry. Roof rails and wheel arch cladding really wouldn't suit this car at all. Clever technology, though, suits this car perfectly. Take this key fob. You and your partner can have separate ones, each individually programmable, so that your personal climate and infotainment preferences are preset every time you get behind the wheel, which is what we're going to do now. In many ways, this is the best Jaguar cabin ever crafted. Sure, there are little areas where it could be improved, and we'll get to those in a moment, but it trumps what's on offer from Tesla in almost every conceivable way in terms of quality, design, and material excellence. You might be less enthused if your point of comparison is, say, an Audi e-tron or a Mercedes EQC, but even then, there's much to be said for the more interesting and slightly less clinical way that Jaguar's designers have gone about their work here. You sit high up, 150 millimetres higher than in an E-Pace, for instance, because of all those batteries beneath the floor. But of course, that's what you want in a large SUV. And in every other way, this model's EV provenance is expertly disguised. You don't really notice the stubby bonnet, for instance, thanks to a huge dash that gives more of the feel of a classic long-nosed Jag. And Despite the absence of transmission mechanicals, there's still a big lower console extending back between the seats so that if you're switching from an XF or an XJ, you'll feel right at home. The cabin finishing's also been chosen with that in mind. Not for Jaguar, the kind of newfangled materials that mark out, say, a BMW iCar. It's an iPace. You can even have gentleman's club style wood veneer. Though the standard mix of aluminium, leather and piano black decor better suits this model's new technology vibe. The seat should also add to your sense of well-being. Either the comfort-focused standard chairs that come as standard, trimmed either in Luxtec artificial hide or in real leather, or the more dynamic-looking optional F-type performance seats we've got here that are firmer on your lower back but position you more securely. There are some lovely interior touches too, our favourite being the passenger sensing two-zone aircon that only cools where and when required. Perhaps inevitably given the current luxury trend and the fact that this is an EV, there are lots of screens. This Touch Pro Duo twin display centre console layout now increasingly familiar across modern JLR products. The 10-inch upper screen is for all the infotainment functions, navigation, music, telephone stuff and so on, plus the Apple CarPlay Android Auto smartphone mirroring compatibility that JLR has at last got around 
to building into one of its products. The five inch lower screen deals with all the climate controls and incorporates a couple of rotary dials that can be yanked or prodded to control fan speed or heat levels. This isn't our favorite style of infotainment setup. The single big screen you get in a Tesla works more quickly with larger, easier screen icons. And the twin screens you get in a rival Audi e-tron include haptic feedback, which makes it easier to find and access functions without taking your eyes off the road. What's common here, though, is the slightly daunting feel you initially get on first acquaintance in trying to master the thing. There are lots of touch and slide functions accessing links that then have their own settings menus. As ever with these things, though, once you've got your head around the functionality, it works fine. There's also, of course, a separate screen provided for the instrument binnacle in this day and age. It would be rather odd to find analog gauges in an electric car. It's a slick 12.3 inch TFT digital display that lets you decide exactly what information you want to be displayed in front of you and in what configuration. It looks particularly high tech when you configure it to show 3D mapping as part of an EV navigation system that's actually really clever able to assess the topography of your chosen route and use insight from previous journeys. It's all been very carefully thought through. Lots of things about this cabin have. The way, for instance, that the climate control temperatures have been neatly incorporated into the centre of each dial, or the way that the holes in the grills of the Meridian speakers are never duplicated in size so that the trapezoidal shape of the grill looks balanced. Switching to a more important issue, all-round visibility isn't great. You can't see the furthest corners of the stubby bonnet, and the thick rear pillars and shallow rear window mean that your rear three-quarter view is slightly compromised too. But both are failings that Jaguar appears to be well aware of, hence the brand's standardization of all-round parking sensors, an automatic parking system, and a rear-view camera. Here, that's been further embellished with a surround view camera setup. Provision of cabin storage ought to be helped immeasurably by the flat floor and the lack of a bulky transmission setup. And broadly, that's how it turns out. The lower part of the center console has been hollowed out and between the seats, there's a huge storage bin that becomes even bigger if you lift out this cup holder section, just ahead of which is a pen tray. The bin has an elasticated strap and incorporates a SIM card slot plus twin USBs and a 12 volt port. The glove box is a decent size and incorporates a pen clip, though it's a pity that this compartment isn't lockable as standard. In addition, the door bins can take a large bottle of water. There's an overhead compartment for your sunglasses and there are ticket clips in the sun visors. And cabin quality? Well, as suggested earlier, it depends on what your point of comparison is. It's fine by the standards of the full executive segment, and it's certainly a step up from what you'd get in an F-Pace. But whether it conforms to the much higher levels of opulence required by customers looking at premium badged boardroom level luxury SUVs is less certain, which is significant given the exalted sums Jaguar wants to charge for decently specified iPACE models fitted with key optional features. There's nothing wrong with the standard of build, which comes courtesy of Magna Steyr in Austria, to whom the brand has farmed out iPACE production. It's more the little things that let the side down a bit, like some elements of the minor switch gear and the lift out cup holder part of the storage console between the seats, the lower section of which is fashioned from the kind of plastic that has no place in a car of this price. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now here, the EV style cab forward design ought to pay real dividends for backseat occupants, as should the lengthy wheelbase, which at 2,990 millimeters is 30 millimeters longer than that of a Jaguar XF. These wide door sills slightly compromise ease of entry. But once you're inside, it really does feel pretty spacious. We just mentioned the XF 
the I-Pace is also 15 millimeters wider than that car. And this, combined with the lack of the usual prominent transmission tunnel, contributes greatly to the roomy ambience. As we suggested earlier, there's far more legroom than the external dimensions lead you to expect, 890 millimeters of it to be exact. And things would be even better if it were easier to slip your feet beneath the front seats. Headspace is generous too. There's 968 millimeters of it, even with this huge glass panoramic roof fitted. Incidentally, this absorbs UV light, so there's no need for a blind. A couple of six footers would certainly be fine back here, though some folk might find the way the roof curves downwards towards the sides of the car to be a little claustrophobic. Unfortunately, the seat bases don't slide and the backrests don't recline, but you do get this nice touch. There are storage areas beneath the seat bases on both sides, big enough to swallow either an iPad or a laptop. There's also a central armrest that incorporates a 10.5 litre storage compartment, plus a couple of cup holders. And you get seat back storage nets, twin USB ports and a 12 volt socket these neat overhead reading lights and climate vents in the B-pillars. As with the rival Mercedes and Audi models we mentioned earlier, Jaguar has chosen not to try and emulate the other major contender in this segment, the Tesla Model X, by offering an optional third seating row at the back, which could be significant for some family buyers. But if that's not an issue, you shouldn't be disappointed by the cargo spaces this I-Pace can offer. Yes, cargo spaces, there are two of them. We'll start with the one up front. Jaguar designers haven't wasted the extra room created by the lack of an engine up front, so I-Pace buyers get a fruit or a frunk or whatever else you want to call it beneath the bonnet. Unfortunately, it's not very big, just 27 litres in size. And though it does have this little side net, it's not much use for anything other than a laptop case or perhaps a couple of cycling helmets. If that's the kind of outdoor activity that you're into, you'll want to tick the box for the optional activity key, a waterproof, shockproof wristband with an integrated transponder. When wearing it, you can lock the key in the car, removing the anxiety of losing it. And when you return from rock climbing, canoeing, biking, or whatever, all you do is hold the wristband next to the letter J on the tailgate's Jaguar badge, and it opens the tailgate so you can access the ordinary key fob where it'll have been safely stowed away. Provided you've avoided entry-level trim, this tailgate will be power operated and on this top spec model or as an option, you can activate it with a sweep of your foot below the bumper. Should you key in pocket, find yourself approaching the car laden down with baggage. Once the hatch has completed its arthritic progress upwards, a modest 505 litre boot is revealed. You may have seen the figure 656 litres quoted elsewhere, but that applies rather uselessly to wet cargo capacity, which won't be relevant unless you intend to flood the back of your eye paste with water or fill it with tennis balls. Seven carry-on cases will fit, which sounds okay, until you learn that an Audi Q5 can take nine and a Tesla Model X can take 11. Still, at least the cargo area's usably shaped. There's 1,060 millimeters of width between the wheel arches, plus a broad hatch opening and a lowish loading lip that helps when trying to get bulky items in. There are bag hooks on both cargo side walls and a 12 volt socket on the right, plus also on the right, an elasticated strap. As you'd expect, there are four chromed tie down hooks in the floor that you'll be able to use to keep smaller items in place if you've ordered the optional luggage net. There's shallow space beneath the boot floor, but as you can see, the nearer section is taken up with charging cables. There's certainly nothing like the depth this area would need to offer to be able to accommodate an optional spare wheel. 
If you need more room and have to drop the rear backrests, you might be disappointed to find that they don't fold in a flexible 40-20-40 split, as is the case in an F-Pace. Nor do you get a ski hatch, all of which makes it difficult to carry longer items without disturbing rear-seated folk. Still, at least the 60-40 split backrests fold flat, and once they've been retracted, 1,163 litres of dry cargo capacity is freed up. The wet figure is 1,453 litres. There's no fold forward front passenger seat option and that capacity figure is quite a bit less than you'd get in a typical mid-size SUV. But there's 1,797 millimetres of cargo area length in this configuration and we reckon it'll be perfectly fine for most likely owners. I-Pace pricing from launch was pitched in the 65 to 75,000 pound bracket for standard models offered with SSE or as in this case HSE trim. As usual with an EV, a three and a half thousand pound government grant towards purchase can be subtracted from those figures. Buyers of this standalone five door SUV body style get one EV400 all electric package. It's numbers designated in the 400 PS output. The design's based around a single 90 kilowatt hour battery good for 292 miles of WLTP rated driving range, which powers two electric motors that together create an all wheel drive powertrain. Okay, time to look at your alternatives in the rapidly expanding luxury BEV or battery electric vehicle market. Now, you'd be forgiven for not knowing your options in this segment since so many of them are either recently announced or just about to come to market. The key differentiating factor between the various contenders is driving range, which we'll quote to the current WLTP or World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure System standard. If the figures you come across vary significantly from the ones we're about to give you, it could be because they've been sourced using the old and far less accurate NEDC or new European driving cycle standard. Ask if you're not certain so as to ensure that apples are always being compared to apples. So, how have Jaguar's three traditional German rival brands reacted to the arrival of this car? Well, as you might expect, they've not been far behind with directly competing EV products. The first of those to follow this car into our market was the Audi e-tron, which from launch was priced from around £72,000. The Audi is a slightly larger car and has a slightly bigger 95 kilowatt hour battery, but that translates into nearly 250 kilos of extra curb weight, which is why the e-tron's 241 mile driving range is 51 miles down on that of this Jag. Another key rival, the Mercedes EQC, has a 280 mile driving range, closer to what you get from an I-Pace, despite that Merck's use of a smaller 80 kilowatt hour battery. But the EQC has a significantly smaller boot than an I-Pace and, like the Audi, has a price starting point that's slightly higher than Jaguar's asking here. We're less convinced that a potential I-Pace buyer would consider BMW's initial entrance into this segment, the iX3, because this is just another X3 derivative with basically the same body style, it can be cheaper than this Jaguar. But sharing a combustion engine body shape design hasn't allowed the Munich maker to maximise the interior space that a battery powertrain makes possible. So an iX3 feels a class smaller than an iPACE inside. Plus, the BMW has a smaller 70 kilowatt hour battery and so a slightly lower 249 mile range than what's on offer here. And what of Tesla? Well, rather loftily, Jaguar says it doesn't rate the American company as a direct rival because its products aren't luxurious enough. Like many potential buyers, we disagree and would suggest that if you want a luxury BEV, the US brand has three cars you might find difficult to ignore in this segment. Only one of them is an SUV and therefore directly comparable to an I-Pace. Launched here in 2016, the Tesla Model X was the very first large all-electric SUV and remains a key competitor for this Jag, even though it's a slightly larger car with prices which start at around £75,000 right at the top end of what you'd have to pay for an I-Pace. 
It also doesn't help this Tesla's cause that the base figure gets you only a standard range variant, which has an operating capability of only 230 miles. You'll need to pay £10,000 more for a long range Model X variant, which can go up to 315 miles, if you're to get that car in a comparably usable form to this Jaguar. We mentioned three competing Tesla options, assuming that you're not especially hung up on the idea of having an SUV, and we think many potential luxury segment BEV buyers won't be, you'll want to consider the Tesla Model S, which, though it's a five-door, competes primarily in the luxury saloon segment. At the time of this test, around £72,000 was enough to get a standard range Model S with a 280 mile range only fractionally less than this Jaguar and around £81,000 would get you a long range Model S variant with a substantially better 375 mile range. The handling of a Model S, though, simply isn't in the same league as that of an iPACE. Closer in terms of drive dynamics is the American brand's Model 3. That's a saloon, and though much smaller inside than this Jag, is significantly cheaper, with prices for the base Standard Range Plus version, which has a 258-mile range, starting from under £40,000. A more direct iPACE competitor is the Model 3 Long Range all-wheel drive variant, which at the time of this test cost just under £50,000 and offered a 348-mile driving range. That's it for all electric options. Now, obviously, there are plug-in hybrid models in the luxury segment. iPACE money would, for instance, get you plug-in petrol electric versions of the BMW X5, the Mercedes GLE and the Porsche Cayenne. But that's not quite the same thing. The whole reason many customers will be considering this Jaguar will be because they want to get away from filling stations for good. If that's the case for you, and having considered all the competing BEV segment options we've just talked you through, you decide that it is an iPACE you really want, then you're going to need to know just how generous Jaguar's been with the standard spec. So let's go on to have a look at that now. All models get, of course, the usual electrical iPACE features. There's a 7 kilowatt single phase onboard charger, and as you'd expect, there's a Mode 3 cable for public chargers and a Mode 2 lead for home use that'll be based around a timed charging system. You'll often want to use this in concert with the provided preconditioning option that'll warm or cool the cabin prior to your expected departure time so that you don't have to waste battery energy using the two-zone climate system to do it. As for more conventional luxury segment equipment, well, the entry-level S variant comes with 18-inch alloy wheels, full LED headlights with headlamp levelling, LED tail lamps, keyless entry and flush power extending exterior door handles plus auto headlamps and wipers. You also get an acoustic infrared laminated heated windscreen with heated washer jets, a secure tracker system in case of theft, an intrusion sensor alarm and a range of camera driven safety features which we'll cover in more detail later on in this section. Once inside, S-Spec treats you to Luxtec front sports seats that offer eight-way power adjustment and are trimmed in synthetic leather. In addition, there's a heated steering wheel and an auto-dimming rear view mirror. You also get Jaguar drive control with its various different drive modes, plus for slippery surfaces, a low traction launch system and the brand's useful all surface progress control package, a kind of low speed cruise control for when you're crawling along off road. You're additionally aided by cruise control with a speed limiter and a park pack that includes 360 degree parking aid, front and rear parking sensors, a rear traffic monitor, a rear exit monitor and park assist system that will automatically steer the car into a space using both perpendicular and parallel parking manoeuvres. We'll also mention another really nice standard touch, the eye assist button in the overhead console that connects you through to an operator. It will help you with questions you have about driving and using your iPACE. 
Plus, of course, there are all the screens, the interactive driver's display, 12.3 inch TFT configurable instrument cluster, and the upper and lower center console monitors of the Touch Pro Duo setup. This is your access point for an infotainment system that includes voice control, navigation, a 380 watt 11 speaker DAB Meridian sound system, a rear view camera, and a Connect Pro Pack that enables you to turn your iPace into a 4G Wi Fi hotspot. Also, for your smartphone, there's Bluetooth connectivity and for the very first time on a Jaguar Land Rover model, access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. As well as an app to allow you to set charging times on your smartphone, all iPace variants additionally get Jaguar's full suite of in-control apps, a car-optimized interactive set of apps that enable media streaming, cloud and location-based services, and more via the provided USB port. The infotainment system also includes a range of integrated pro services your dealer will want to tell you about. These include real-time traffic information and an online search feature that, as you drive, allows you to search the surrounding area for places of interest. There's also a commute mode that enables the system to learn your commute so that even if you haven't inputted a destination, it will automatically advise you of the expected journey time based on live and and historical traffic movements. Plus, there's a parking service so that as you approach your destination, you can see where parking is available. Simply tap on your preferred car park and the navigation system will update itself, then take you directly there. It's all very clever, as is the way that owners of Alexa-enabled devices will be able to use them to ask for information on this Jaguar's current status. OK, enough with the features that are standard across the lineup. Is it worth paying more to progress up the range? Well, if you're considering that, then you'll be directed first to the mid-level SE variant, recognisable by its larger 20-inch six-spoke wheels and premium-style LED headlamps that feature signature daytime running light strips. At this point in the iPace lineup, you get full-grained leather upholstery and wider 10-way electric seat adjustment in the front. There's also a powered tailgate and auto dimming power folding door mirrors. Plus you get a drive pack with various camera driven safety features and adaptive cruise control incorporating a stop and go function for tailbacks. We'll cover that in more detail in our safety section. Should you go further and stretch up to the plush HSE variant we're trying here? Well, it's certainly tempting to. At this level in the lineup, you get matrix LED headlamps that feature a power wash and can adapt themselves to road conditions and surrounding traffic. Plus, the 20 inch wheels get a more eye catching gloss, dark grey contrast diamond turned finish. Inside, the upholstery is trimmed in softer Windsor leather and is heated in the rear. The front seats are both heated and cooled and get 18-way adjustment and memory settings. There's also a 360-degree surround view camera system and the tailgate can be operated by a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. Plus, at this level in the range, you get a driver assist pack with various semi-autonomous driving aids. Again, we'll cover those in more detail when we get on to talking about safety kit. On to options. Now, the key thing we think you need to look at here is some kind of change to the suspension. Jaguar has done a pretty good job with the damping of this I-Pace, but the prodigious 2.2 tonne curb weight inevitably has to adversely affect ride quality over porous surfaces and does if you stick with the standard passive springs and go for one of the larger wheel sizes. There are two other options, the first being adaptive damping offered as part of an optional adaptive dynamics and configurable dynamics package costing another £800. This setup uses sensors that analyse body movement 100 times a second and wheel movement 500 times a second, ensuring that the suspension should always be perfectly suited to the way you want to drive. It works through the various modes of that Jaguar drive control system we mentioned earlier and enables you to tailor damping settings as well as your throttle and steering preferences via a configurable dynamics section of the center dash screen. 
Ideally, though, we think you'd want to go a stage further and get full air suspension on a car this heavy. Mercedes and Audi seem to agree with us, fitting air suspension as standard on their models in this sector. To get what Jaguar calls active air suspension on an I-Pace, you have to find another £1,100 plus more if, as is almost certain, you want to pair it with that adaptive dynamics and configurable dynamics package. Another key optional driving feature is the brand's ADSR, or Adaptive Surface Response System, which works with the all-wheel drive setup to ensure a smooth drive in adverse conditions. ADSR recognises differences between different kinds of terrain and adapts the iPACE's accelerator pedal response to allow for a more stable drive across different surfaces such as grass, gravel or snow. Once you've got these key driving features sorted out, the kind of spec you're likely to look for is probably similar to that which features on this test car, which has a few key extras you'll probably want. We particularly like the huge panoramic glass roof that floods the cabin with light, but doesn't compromise rear seat headroom. Another optional feature we'd really seek out would be the activity key, a waterproof, shockproof wristband with an integrated transponder. When wearing it, you can lock the key in the car, removing the anxiety of losing it. And when you return from rock climbing, canoeing, biking or whatever, all you do is hold the wristband near to the letter J on the tailgate's Jaguar badge and it opens the tailgate so you can access the ordinary key fob where it'll have been safely stowed away. The activity key doesn't have a battery so it will never run out of power. Seats are a big thing to get right with this car. Basically, the decision is whether to stay with the standard sports seats, the upholstery of which can be upgraded either to real leather, super soft Windsor leather, or a premium textile finish, depending on what your starting point is. Or you can switch completely to the grippier Windsor leather trimmed performance seats, which are designed like those in Jaguar's F-Type sports car. Various seat functionality packages can then add in heating, multi-way electric and seat memory functions. What else? Well, it's a bit surprising to find that front fog lamps are optional across the range. And talking of lights, the intelligent matrix headlamps of this top HSE variant are available further down the range. Inside, the head-up display that projects key information up into your line of sight would be good to have. You might also want to specify privacy glass, a cabin air ionisation system, a lockable cooled glove box and four zone climate control with separate functionality for the rear part of the cabin. There's also an optional configurable ambient lighting package, though it only gives you a choice of 10 colours. The comparable Mercedes system has 64 shades. Organising your media connectivity and in-car entertainment options will also be an important part of the iPACE specification process. Most buyers of S or SE spec models are probably going to want to think about upgrading the audio system to the 825 watt 15 speaker surround sound version of the Meridian sound system that we've been trying here. On to aesthetics. Now, wheel rim sizes tend to be key for I-Pace buyers, so there's a wide range of different alloy designs on offer in 18-inch, 20-inch and 22-inch sizes. This particular car's 20-inch, five split-spoke technical grey polished rims are particularly nice. Whatever your rim choice, don't forget to add in locking wheel nuts. And on to paintwork. Bear in mind that unless you want this Jaguar finished in solid Fuji white or Narvik black, you'll have to pay extra for one of the metallic finishes. There are seven shades on offer, including this car's Chorus Grey, plus two further premium metallic hues of Feralan Pearl Black and Silicon Silver. Avoid the black shades on offer and you can add in a black contrast roof at further extra cost. As for finishing exterior touches, well, gloss black side window surrounds are available as a standalone option, or you can have them as part of the optional black exterior pack, which has been fitted to this particular car. This also includes a gloss black front grille with a gloss black surround. Alternatively, there's a carbon fiber exterior pack, which adds that finishing to the front grille surround, the door mirror caps, the body sides and the bumpers. You can add some of these carbon fiber elements separately too. 
you're probably going to want to get the interior of your I-Pace finished to your exact preferences too. Now, we've already talked about seats, but there's a lot more to customising this car's cabin than that. A full extended leather upgrade extends hide across the doors and the dash, or there's a premium textile upgrade if you don't like leather. You can add sports pedal covers and illuminated metal tread plates with Jaguar script in the door apertures. And the roof lining can be upgraded with an ebony Mortzine headliner. Or you can specify suede cloth in light oyster or ebony for the headliner and the sun visors. Suede cloth can trim the steering wheel too. And yes, if you really must, you can have wood in an I-Pace. Gloss charcoal ash veneer replacing the standard gloss black trim finishes. You think the other optional trim finishes, monogram aluminium and aluminium weave carbon fibre, better suit the style of the car. On to practicalities. Now you can make better use of boot space by adding in a partition net, a floor net, a luggage compartment organiser or load space storage rails. Bear in mind, that a space saver spare wheel costs extra. So you'll need to budget for that if in the event of a puncture, you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road with one of those irritating tire inflation kits. Carpet mats cost extra too, and click and hang coat hangers can be fitted in behind the front head restraints. Plus there's a whole range of pet accessories, not only things like luggage area partitions and load space liners, but even things like spill resistant water bowls and a pet ramp so that your arthritic Labrador can get up into the luggage area more easily. As you'd expect, a detachable tow bar is available. And if you have that, you can mount a cycle carrier to it. Roof cross bars are available too, as is a water sports carrier and a holder for skis and snowboards. Finally, as mentioned earlier, a secure tracker system is standard, but you might want to upgrade this to Secure Tracker Pro status, which integrates authentication technology into the key fob. If your car's stolen with non-authorised keys, an alert will be sent within minutes to a stolen vehicle tracking centre. On to safety, where, as you'd expect, most of the main bases are covered. Now, Jaguar hasn't bothered with offering a driver's knee bag, but twin front, side and curtain airbags are inevitably standard. Plus, there's a unique in-class pedestrian airbag which springs out from beneath the windscreen edge of the deployable bonnet in the event of an impact, protecting pedestrians or cyclists from contact with the glass. And on that subject, because the electric powertrain of the I-Pace is almost silent at low speeds and could therefore be a danger to urban pedestrians and the visually impaired, Jaguar has equipped the car with an external sound system which emits an external acoustic signal at under 12 miles an hour to help make those on the pavement aware of the car's presence as it approaches. More expected passive safety features include isofix, rear child seat fastenings, anti-whiplash head restraints, tyre pressure monitoring and the usual electronic assistance for traction and safety control. As usual, there's ABS braking with emergency brake assist to aid in panic stops, advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard flashes. What else? Well, I-Pace occupants are surrounded by a high-strength steel safety cell fashioned from a combination of steel and aluminium. And there's an SOS emergency call system that for the first 10 years of ownership in the event of an accident will automatically connect you to a response team who will notify the emergency services of your location. To try and avoid that ever happening, the reactions of the person in charge at the wheel will constantly be overseen by a standard driver condition monitor there to search for signs of drowsiness. As for driving aids, well, rollback protection stops the car from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's motor drag torque control to reduce the chance of the kind of wheel lockup that might be caused by strong regenerative braking in slippery conditions. And roll stability control is integrated into the standard dynamic stability control system to reduce the possibility of a rollover during extreme turns at speed. 
All well and good, but what about the kind of clever camera-driven safety features that increasingly feature in all this model's main rivals? Well, of course, the iPACE has these too. Fitted as standard across the range is an autonomous emergency braking system that scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential collision hazards, whether they be vehicles or pedestrians. If such a thing is detected, you'll be warned. If you don't respond or aren't able to, then braking will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. In addition, all iPACE models get a lane keep assist system that'll alert dozy drivers if they're veering out of their lanes on the highway and traffic sign recognition, which pictures key road signs as you pass them, displaying these on the dash. As mentioned earlier, all iPACE buyers also get a rear traffic monitor, which alerts you to oncoming traffic when you're reversing out of a parking bay, and a clear exit monitor, which alerts passengers exiting the car from the rear doors to any approaching cars, cyclists or other hazards. If an oncoming obstacle is detected, a warning light will flash on the door. Avoid entry-level trim and your iPACE will come with two further camera-driven safety features. A blind spot assist setup that works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake in front of another driver. And a high-speed emergency braking feature that attempts to slow the vehicle automatically if it detects that a collision with a slower vehicle ahead is unavoidable. We mentioned earlier that on an SE model, these two features come as part of a drive pack that's optional on the base S version and gives you adaptive cruise control with stop and go functionality. Well, on this top HSE variant, that pack gets upgraded to drive assist pack status, which means that a steering assist feature is added in. With this, the car can not only autonomously accelerate and brake depending on traffic conditions, but also gently steer itself too, making highway driving and heavy traffic situations easier and more comfortable. It's the closest you can get in this Jaguar to any form of autonomous driving. On S and SE iPACE variants, the drive assist pack is optional. The iPACE has been likened to great British cars of the 50s and 60s, and not just because of its groundbreaking technology. With those, it was often wise to buy two, armed with the foreknowledge that at least one of them would probably end up in the workshop most of the time. With the iPACE, the issue is similar, but different. Reliability so far isn't an issue, but the amount of time that this car will have to spend chained to the charging wall box you're going to have to install in your garage, very well maybe. Current technology, after all, means that replenishing a battery with such a high energy capacity, 90 kilowatt hours, isn't for the faint-hearted. Jaguar rather irritatingly headlines the almost irrelevant fact that a 100 kilowatt charger will give this car an 80% charge in 40 minutes. It's irrelevant because at the time of this test in spring 2019, there weren't any 100 kilowatt public chargers in the UK, apart from Tesla's 120 kilowatt supercharger stations, which of course only the American brand's cars can use. You have to admire that US maker's foresight here. It knew Jaguar, Audi, Mercedes and BMW would come along and create better EVs, but it also knew they wouldn't be prepared to invest in the charging infrastructure that in the short term would be needed to make their cars easily usable over long distances. Which is why we'd understand if you admired an iPACE or indeed an e-tron, an EQC or an iX3 but ended up buying a Model 3, a Model S or a Model X instead. That's not to say a charging regime based around iPACE ownership couldn't work quite happily for you if you planned it properly. Use the Mode 3 shaped charging cable with that 7 kilowatt garage wall box and 32 amp socket and this Jaguar's batteries can be charged at a rate of 22 miles of range per hour. This means that the car will need 12.9 hours to replenish itself from a state of completely empty charge. So the claims here of full overnight charging are only just about justified and won't add up at all if you happen to have a late night and an early start. 
As usual with electric cars, there's an app to allow you to set charging times using your smartphone. The real issues start though once you're away from your wall box. If you're out and about and can't find a DC 50 kilowatt charger, which gives you up to 168 miles of driving range in 60 minutes, then if you end up having to plug the alternative Mode 2 cable into an ordinary household style 12 amp socket, you're going to be really stuck because with one of those, the recharging time is around 24 hours. Jaguar says you never would ignoring the fact that at the time of this test there were only 3,178 50 kilowatt chargers serving the whole of the UK. Possibly we're painting an unnecessarily bleak picture here. Obviously it's very unlikely that a typical iPACE owner will be running this model as an only car and we're perfectly aware that the average person's daily round trip commute is about a tenth of the operating range of this Jaguar. Ah yes, range. Even though we've quoted that several times already in this film, we ought to get to it here. A figure measured under WLTP, or World Harmonised Light Vehicle Test Procedure, testing to be 292 miles. Expensive long-range versions of Model 3, Model S and Model X Tesla products can better that, but no other rival can. To give you some class perspective on WLTP rated ranges of obvious rivals, a standard range Tesla Model X manages 230 miles, an Audi e-tron 241, a BMW iX3 249 and a Mercedes EQC 280 miles. These figures are nowhere near as pie in the sky as the range figures we used to get quoted under the old NEDC or New European Driving Cycle Test Regime, but they're still pretty fictional. Based on this test, we're perfectly prepared to believe that 240 miles would be possible between charges in this Jaguar. But the point is that to achieve that, you'd have to be driving the car in the kind of fashion that would never really allow you to enjoy it. Base your journeys around a 200 mile operating range and we think you'll be being a lot more realistic. Maybe a bit less than that in really cold weather. When it comes to maximising driving range, like most EVs, this car pitches in to help quite a lot. There's an eco driving mode you can activate. Press the centre stack button here. That brings up a driving style rating screen on the infotainment display. The eco setting adapts the climate control and tweaks features like the heated seats, the heated windscreen and the heated steering wheel into settings that reduce battery drain. You'd be surprised at how much of an effect these things have on how far you can go in this car and you can gauge that by going to the eco section of the infotainment screen and clicking on the range impact option. Here you can switch various features on and off to see how much impact they'll have on your driving range. A more proactive way of increasing the distance you can travel in this car between charges lies in the effective use of its various braking regeneration options. Not everyone likes the way that aggressive brake regeneration can virtually bring the car to a stop all on its own, which is why you can turn this feature off or dial it back. But when it's working to its max, it really does make a big difference, reclaiming spent energy as you cruise, slow or stop. Basically, when you take your foot off the accelerator, the electric motors work in reverse, becoming generators of electricity to recharge the battery. In fact, Jaguar says that on a hilly road with regeneration set to the max, it's possible to gain as much as 70% of the energy you used going uphill through regeneration braking on the way down. On a flat road, the engineers reckon you can get 0.2 G of retardation from simply coming off the accelerator and another 0.2 G from initial use of the brake pedal. So typically, in most situations, you'll be either ignoring that brake pedal completely or using it with only fractional force. Other useful EV features include infotainment screen mapping that shows you how far you can travel on remaining charge and where the nearest charging points are, and a preconditioning option in the EV menu that, once it knows your morning start time, will pre-cool or pre-warm the cabin in advance so you don't have to drain battery power getting the climate system to do it. 
as usual with EVs, Jaguar provides an app so that you can set charging times on your phone so as to take advantage of low cost electricity rates. We should also mention the integrated heat pump, which harvests heat from both the outside air and the car's electrical components. The collected heat transforms a special liquid within the heat pump into a gas, which causes it to rise in temperature. That warmth is then transferred to the cabin via the heating and ventilation system thereby reducing the power demand from the vehicle battery on colder days and maximising driving range. Slippery aerodynamics also play a useful part in overall efficiency. Elsewhere in this film, we've mentioned this car's pretty sleek 0.29 CD drag factor. Well, that's aided by clever active vanes at the front of the car that open when cooling of the batteries is required, but close when not needed, so as to smooth airflow. What else might you need to know? Well, perhaps the fact that the two synchronous permanent magnet electric motors are up to 97% efficient when transferring power from the battery to the motor. To put that into perspective, we'll tell you that an internal combustion engine is typically only 30 to 40% efficient when producing power from fossil fuels. Or perhaps you'll be more interested in the fact that as an EV vehicle owner, you'll be exempt from the London congestion charge. And for the second year of ownership, you won't have to pay an annual VED tax disc charge. For company car users, electric vehicles offer potentially huge tax savings as they incur benefiting kind taxation fixed at just 9%. As for ownership peace of mind, well, you're limited to the usual unremarkable three-year Jaguar warranty. Though to be fair, it does cover you for up to 100,000 miles, which is better than Audi's three-year 60,000 mile deal. The 90 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery gets its own eight year or 100,000 mile warranty, though it'll actually go on a lot longer than that. The software actually never charges it beyond 85 kilowatt hours in the interests of longevity. And as a result, Jaguar says it's rated to last for at least 13 years without the range capacity depleting. Maintenance is obviously more straightforward than it would be for a combustion engine model. An electric vehicle does, after all, have 20% fewer moving parts. So it's disappointing to find that service intervals are much the same as they would be for an ordinary petrol or diesel Jaguar, set at 21,000 miles or every 24 months, whichever comes first. You should find that the garage visits are cheaper though, there being less for the technicians to do. As usual, it'd probably be sensible to consider one of Jaguar's service plans that cover you for virtually everything in advance. These include checking and topping up brake fluid and a 24 month guarantee on any replacement parts. Should anything go wrong, Europe wide breakdown assistance is part of the deal for three years. Now let's look at insuring this Jaguar. The base S model is rated at Group 49. It's Group 50 for the SE and HSE models. That's pretty much the same as the groupings for a rival Tesla Model X. As for depreciation, well, the news is almost universally positive here. According to industry experts CAP, a typical S variant will still be worth 57.9% of its value after three years or 60,000 miles of use. For this top spec HSE version, that figure falls only slightly to 56.8%. Direct rivals struggle to match that kind of showing and Tesla products are way off. As a result, an iPace should be very cost effective to lease for company or private drivers, whether you choose Jaguar's own scheme or one of the many others on offer. And what about green issues? Some in the green lobby get very angry about the whole pure electric car, zero emissions ethos. They reckon that ignores the well to wheel demands of supplying the electricity that powers cars of this kind. We'd respond by pointing out that these people usually completely overlook the fact that CO2 figures for conventional cars fail to take into account the logistical cost of getting fuel to the pump. 
Still, if you're one of those enviro-conscious folk, we'll tell you, using a well-to-wheels calculation based on typical use of the UK's energy grid, taking an average UK generation contribution of 470 grams per kilowatt, the burden of filling your batteries in this car will result in a theoretical 88 grams per kilometre of CO2 being released into the atmosphere. That's certainly good, but some way from being completely green which is also a comment you could apply to electric vehicle engineering as a whole. Lithium ion batteries aren't recyclable in the way that the fuel cells used in hydrogen powered vehicles are. Currently, when EV vehicles are reaching the end of their lives, the batteries are being reused as electricity storage buffers. After that though, they can't simply be scrapped because lithium ion has explosive elements. So these batteries are simply being buried in landfills, which is hardly sustainable in the long term for humankind. But then, nor is the pollution caused by combustion power. If you see the EV solution as the lesser of the two evils, and your choice of a battery power model must be from the luxury segment, we think it's difficult to ignore this one. We have a suspicion that the history of electric cars won't occupy anything like as long a period as that for the combustion engine. But it's certain that when the life story of the EV comes up for scrutiny, the I-PACE will be seen as a landmark model in battery-powered automotive development. Prior to this car's arrival, we'd yet to see a really engaging BEV or battery electric vehicle, or one you could emotionally bond with. In delivering both things, this Coventry company has not only set a fresh standard in this segment, but also succeeded in its quest to deliver a pure electric model that sets a benchmark in sophistication, but which is also a pure Jaguar. Apart from its relatively lofty price, the major issue that most will have in considering this car lies with our country's current lack of charging infrastructure. It's been often written that this is an element outside of Jaguar's control, but that's only partly true. Rivals Tesla have at least attempted to address this problem by investing in their own network of public supercharger points. Jaguar, like its traditional rivals, only talks about impossibly quick sounding charging times from 100 kilowatt charging stations that will continue to be almost impossible to find for years ahead. As a result, a rival Tesla model will be easier to own, but the American brand can't provide you with a better EV than this. The way things stood at the time of this iPace's introduction, no rival car maker could. Of course, it's not perfect. Created from scratch with just four years of development from a company with no previous electrified experience, you wouldn't expect it to be. But aside from the current limitations of battery range technology, the issues we've come across are small. You'll need the optional air suspension for a really good standard of ride. And once you've spent a bit on extras like that, the price of this car starts to climb up to a point that its interior quality struggles to justify. Otherwise, there's remarkably little to grouse about. Here then is the standard that all current electric cars must aspire to. As with any EV, to own an I-PACE, you'll need to plan your life in a way you simply wouldn't need to with a combustion engine car. But if you can do that, it can deliver the kind of ownership experience you might never have expected an all-electric model would be able to provide. It's different. Of course it is. All cars in the future will be. But this one brings an authenticity to the EV revolution that makes you look at all our automotive futures with a bit more hope. We like it for that. We think you will too.